Okay, now we're going to make another stab at doing a little demo video. Um, I have figured out the audio aspects. This time though, I have set the recording frame to follow the mouse, or in my case, pen. So this might be a little nauseous making. If it's terribly bad, I won't put it up. But um, it'll also allow me to show you a tighter frame of what I'm doing. I've started a page of the League of Analogs comic that I'm working on with author Dave Williams in Bristol, England. Uh, Dave and his lovely wife Ange host the Waiting for the Trade podcast, which you can subscribe to, and you should subscribe to, using iTunes. Um, I've taken the tiny, tiny thumbnail I created for this page, as I did for all the pages, and scanned it in, brought it into Photoshop, increased it to the size of the original page arch, which is roughly 11 by 17. You can see that here. This is the thumbnail Just ignore that universal no symbol. That means I have the layer locked and I can't draw on it. But I don't want to draw on it because it's just a tiny, tiny, bare representation of what I want the figures to be doing. So I'm going to take that back down to 20% so it's not too distracting. And as you can see, I am working in Corel Painter 10. I will be using pen tool, thick and thin pen number five, but that's just what it says. I can make it any thickness or thinness. Uh, these are the layers I have, the canvas, which I never work on, the thumbnail, which I showed you, a photo reference that I'll use later. This is the sketch. This is the only unlocked layer. This is what I will be working on, what I have been working on. And you can, I will make that visible and you can see what I have done for the first panel. You can also see um, subdued here is the dialogue and the sound effects, special effects. This is page 15. I uh, wanted to mention an aspect of working in Painter that I find fairly annoying but I have learned to live with. Every time you open a file, none of these layers are locked and you're defaulted to be drawing on your canvas. Uh, if you're working in a method that's completely simulating real world and you want to be drawing on your canvas, which would in this instance mimic your art Bristol board, that'd be fine. I don't do that though. Uh, there's no point in using digital tools if you're going to hamstring them with the limitations of real-world materials. And by limitations, I'm talking about paper that you can draw on and draw on and erase and erase until it's worn out. And as you can see, the way I work is very sketchy, scratchy in the beginning up until the very final ink stages. So I prefer to work on layers. <coughs> and I have, we're planning on having this book printed with Kablam. So I have their Kablam frame showing me the live areas, the active areas. And I have a layer for the bal balloons and the special effects. This is not a, t well, there's barely any t copy on this page. So this is a very light page for that layer. The borders, which are the black panel borders. I like to keep everything separate so that if I change one thing I don't inadvertently erase a border and have to replace it. And then my sketch layer. Again you see the very rough sketching, gesture style sketching that I use to start to firm up the figures based on what I have put on the thumbnail. And I will 
make that invisible and you can see and I'll make this 100% again you can see how the figures are laid out for panel one this is the villain character is taking a sword swipe at the heroine character and the um, collateral damage character is over here being collaterally damaged and uh, you can see a whiter area here that's because Dave the author suggested that I pull this panel over to the left a little to make the action more centrally located so the collateral damage character is a little more into the center previously he was right there on the edge and eh, I agreed that's the wonderful as one of the wonderful aspects of digital art is you can make easily make these changes so I uh, this very rough thumbnail has spawned this sketch let me take this back down to 20 so it's again not distracting when it's when the layer is locked you can still change the transparency or translucence aspect of the layers but uh, okay you've got all these I've used a different color for every character which I do sometimes it's just make my um, gesture drawing scribbles on a multi figure panel can get sometimes confusing even for me so I use different colors for different characters um, go get away from that S thumbnail layer because it's locked and that what I'm the stage I'm working on now I'm just going to rough out the characters in all of these um, panels so that one is enough for me to feel I can move on except for one thing you see how this this is a well that's on, in the setting of the room where this action takes place you can see where it chops off I uh, had already moved the thumbnail panel to the left but seeing the sketch I decided to move it even further to the left so I'm gonna try to capture that purple nope not quite there we go and I'm going to continue to indicate that well so that uh, I will know to put more well in it when I get to it now I hate doing ellipses and uh, geometric things freehand so when I get th to that st to the more finished stage I will take the this file into Photoshop and use the oval tool to create uh, the ovals and the straight lines that will become the well in the background I could do it in painter but painters a little clunky in that so I'm not going to bother with it I'll, since painter and Photoshop play well together I just go back and forth between the programs I always save my painter files as PSD files Photoshop document files as opposed to the RF RIF native painter file because you can't open a RIF file in Photoshop, but you can open a PSD in Photoshop. Now you see I activated a layer that had some photo reference. There you go. He's gone again. Now he's back again. I'll make that 100% so you can see him. This is one of the photographic references from the comic art photo reference series of books. I'm fiddling around on my bookshelf. Ah, Buddy Scalera very kindly put these things out. Comic artists photo reference and they are quite useful as long as you don't stay s too slavishly to the reference which I don't usually do. But it's nice to have a little little more reality to some of these things. So I'm gonna... this character is the same as the turquoise sketched character so I'm just gonna start laying in 